Have you ever wondered what the end of the world would truly look like? Prepare yourself for a chilling tale that might just keep you up at night. The first sign was subtle, almost imperceptible. A whisper on the wind, carrying the scent of decay. Max paused as she walked her dog through the park, her nostrils flaring. Something was... off. The leaves on the trees seemed to wilt before her eyes, their vibrant greens fading to sickly yellows and browns. Her dog whimpered, tugging at the leash, desperate to return home. That was day one. By day three, the hospitals were overwhelmed. People flooded the emergency rooms, their bodies racked with an inexplicable illness. Fevers raged, skin erupted in weeping sores, and the air was filled with the sounds of hacking coughs and agonised moans. The doctors were baffled, their treatments useless against this new plague. Max watched from her apartment window as ambulances screamed past, their sirens a constant wail of despair. She hadn't left her home since that day in the park, but even here she couldn't escape the feeling of wrongness that permeated the air. On day five, the first riots broke out. Grocery store shelves were stripped bare, pharmacies ransacked. The streets became battlegrounds as desperate people fought over dwindling supplies. Max huddled in her darkened apartment, her dog pressed close against her side, both of them trembling at the sounds of breaking glass and distant gunshots. It was on day seven that the dreams began. Max found herself standing in a vast, barren field. The sky above was the colour of bruised flesh, roiling with unnatural storm clouds. In the distance, she saw four figures on horseback, approaching at a terrifying gallop. As they drew closer, she could make out their forms. The first rode a white horse, his crown glinting with malevolence. Conquest, come to subjugate the world. The second, atop a fiery red steed, brandished a massive sword. War, ready to set the world ablaze with conflict. The third, hunched and gaunt on a black horse, carried scales in his skeletal hands. Famine, here to starve the masses. And the last, the most terrifying of all, rode a pale horse the colour of a corpse. Death himself, come to claim his due. Max woke screaming, drenched in sweat, her dog howling in sympathetic terror. Day ten brought the collapse of governments. World leaders, struck down by the mysterious plague or overwhelmed by the chaos engulfing their nations, retreated into bunkers, or simply vanished. The airwaves filled with static, punctuated by desperate pleas for help and dire warnings. Max huddled by her battery-powered radio, listening as station after station went silent. The world was unravelling, and there was nothing anyone could do to stop it. On day 13, the skies turned red. A blood-coloured miasma descended upon the city, bringing with it an oppressive heat that seemed to sap the strength from every living thing. Plants withered and died, animals lay gasping in the streets, and those few humans who still ventured outside quickly succumbed to the toxic atmosphere. Max pressed a damp cloth to her face, struggling to breathe as she peered out her window. The city was a wasteland, cars abandoned in the streets, buildings dark and lifeless, and in the distance, through the haze of the blood-red fog, she saw them. Four figures on horseback, slowly making their way down the main street. Her heart pounded in her chest, as she recognised them from her dreams. They were real. They were here. 
the four horsemen had come to claim their kingdom of ash and bone. Conquest raised his bow, loosing arrows of pestilence that streaked through the sky like comets. Wherever they struck, disease bloomed, the ground itself seeming to rot and fester. War's sword cleaved the air, and in its wake, madness descended. Those few survivors still clinging to life turned on each other with savage fury, tearing at flesh with teeth and nails in a frenzy of violence. Famine extended his hand, and the very earth seemed to shrivel. Crops withered in the fields, livestock fell dead in their pens, and hunger gnawed at the bellies of the living with insatiable cruelty. And death. Death simply watched, patient and implacable, knowing that all would come to him in the end. Max sank to the floor, her back against the wall, as the sounds of the apocalypse raged outside. Her dog whimpered softly, pressing his head into her lap. She stroked his fur mechanically, her eyes unfocused, her mind struggling to comprehend the horror that had befallen the world. Days blurred together in a nightmarish haze. Max rationed her dwindling supplies, each meal smaller than the last. The water from her taps turned brackish, then stopped altogether. She collected rainwater when she could, but even that was tainted, leaving a metallic taste in her mouth and a burning sensation in her throat. The silence was the worst part. No more sirens, no more screams. Just an oppressive quiet, broken only by the occasional rumble of distant thunder or the creaking of abandoned buildings slowly succumbing to decay. Max's dreams were her only connection to the outside world now, and they were filled with visions of the four horsemen wreaking havoc across the globe. She saw great cities crumble, mighty forests reduced to ash, and vast oceans boil and recede. Humanity's greatest achievements were swept away like sandcastles before the tide, leaving only ruin in their wake. And always, always, the four horsemen rode on, tireless and implacable in their mission to unmake creation. On what Max estimated to be day thirty, though time had lost all meaning in this new hell, she heard a sound that made her blood run cold, hoofbeats drawing ever closer. With trembling legs, she rose and approached the window. The blood-red fog had thinned somewhat, allowing her to see the street below with terrible clarity. They were there. The four horsemen, gathered directly beneath her apartment building. As if sensing her gaze, they looked up in unison, their eyes burning with an otherworldly light that seared into Max's very soul. Conquest smiled, a gesture devoid of warmth or mercy. War hefted his sword, the blade drinking in what little light remained. Famine's scales tipped back and forth, measuring the worth of every life and finding all wanting. And death. Death simply extended a bony hand, beckoning. Max stumbled back from the window, her heart pounding so hard she thought it might burst from her chest. This was it. The end of everything. She gathered her dog in her arms, burying her face in his fur as tears streamed down her cheeks. I'm sorry, she whispered, though to whom she wasn't sure. I'm so, so sorry. Outside, the sound of hoofbeats resumed, growing louder and louder until it seemed to shake the very foundations of the earth. Max closed her eyes, holding her beloved pet close, and waited for the inevitable. The door to her apartment exploded inward in a shower of splinters. Four shadows fell across the threshold, and the world as Max knew it came to an end. The four horsemen had risen, and humanity had fallen. The apocalypse wasn't fire and brimstone, nor aliens or zombies. It was conquest, war, famine, and death. The oldest and most terrible forces known to mankind. And as they rode across the broken lands that had once been our civilization, a question echoed in the desolate silence. Who would be left to tell the tale of humanity's final days? If this chilling tale of the apocalypse has left you trembling in the dark, hungry for more, 
don't let the terror end here. Subscribe to our channel for weekly doses of horror that will haunt your dreams and make you question the very fabric of reality. Hit that notification bell to ensure you never miss a story. After all, in these uncertain times, who knows when the next tale might be our last. And if you dare, share this video with friends and family. Spread the fear, for in the face of the apocalypse, misery truly does love company. Remember, the Four Horsemen may be fiction for now, but in the depths of night, when the shadows grow long, can you really be sure?